CNM Seeds Weed School is brought to you by Bear Crop Science. We're here today on realairculture.com. We're at Siggy. We're here with Elaine. Elaine, what is a farinograph? Um, a farinograph is a piece of equipment that measures the rheological properties of a dough, which is primarily made of flour and water. So inside the bowl of the equipment, which is right here, uh, we would place a weighted amount of flour. We would then add water to the bowl uh, using this burette that's calibrated in milliliters and absorption. As the water is added to the flour and while the sample is being mixed, we're collecting the data on the uh, software right here by measuring the amount of torque that's sensed on the mixing blades. So right here... So we're basically the viscosity or... what? Are um, we? It's kind of like a viscosity measurement. Um, it's the amount of force that's being exerted or the torque that's being sensed by the blades as they're mixing the sample. So you can see here that as the water is being added, our uh, dough rheology or viscosity or torque is increasing till it reaches a maximum point, which is the development time of that particular sample. As it continues to be mixed, you know that this line starts to decrease, which means that we're causing the dough to break down and losing its viscosity or its rheology, and therefore exerting less torque on the mixing blades. We measure a number of different factors on the sample, such as when that development time occurs, which is roughly around here. We measure the stability, which is the amount of time in minutes that the top of the curve is above that red line. And then we also measure another parameter called mixing tolerance index, which is the amount uh, or the drop in the curve from its development time five minutes after that point, which would be roughly between these two points measured in uh, bra bender units. Okay, and so why is that important? Um, the mixing tolerance index is uh, telling you the rate of breakdown. So a low number equals a low rate of breakdown. Uh, the stability measurement is important because it tells you how stable a dough is to mixing. So we like to see this top line stay above the red line for an extended period of time, indicating that the dough is stable to mixing or extended has, periods of mixing. has like endurance, I guess. Exactly, strength. So those are the two, uh, well, stability is probably the most important parameter that you hear people asking you about. What's a dough stability? Because when they're in a commercial bakery, and they have a process that goes from mixing to sliced bread, they can't be changing the individual times of how long it's going to mix, how long it's going to be rounded and divided to accommodate a dough that has different strength characteristics. So if a dough has stability, it's uh, very versatile and can be used without um, much changing to their setup. Okay. Oh, end of test. And our test just ended, and right now you'll see all the parameters um, that come measured. So here was our development time right there, and our stability points right there. Okay. And so then what will you do with the results then? Um, we would use this with the, uh, along with the other measurements that we take on the flour, and which would be the protein. Uh, we would look at the gluten content as well, starch damage levels, to sort of see if they all kind of interrelate as we expect them to. And to sort of help fully characterize the flour that we're looking at. Okay, so are you doing this variety by variety? Or are you doing this, uh, how, how, how does the testing program work? It really depends uh, what we'll test on here. Um, this is, what we're testing right now is rather unique. It's actually some Durham flowers. And these are variety specific. We're wanting to see whether or not the varieties have different properties from each other. And we expect that they do because we know that they have different gluten strength and gluten characteristics. Um, and so that would so then when you get those results that would help in market development trying to find markets for that durum flour and those kinds of things potentially yes okay if we're looking at just the normal wheat classes um, they may vary based on protein content they may be vary based on grade and therefore we might compare them in those uh, parameters and if we knew how the grading characteristics changed that may explain why a particular sample behaves in a particular way. Maybe if it had fusarium damage, maybe it would show uh, lower strength characteristics, so decreased stability, um, uh, increased MTI value. Sure.
So it automatically shuts off because the um, okay, so safety switch has been Okay, activated. so the test is over and this yeah. is kind of what's left. This is the mixed semolina. And we know it's a semolina yeah. dough just because of the bright yellow color that it has. Sorry, what was that? A semolina dough. Oh, okay. From Durham wheat. Yep. Because... It's got a bright yellow color. And so wheat would be more white. Yes. Yeah, okay. A creamy, ivory white. Okay. Thank you very much. Awesome.